Boxing champion Muhammad Ali emerged as a symbol of the civil rights black power movement that swept across the United States from 1960 to 1970. In a tumultuous and volatile time of legal racial segregation in the United States, political, racial and cultural forces intertwined in a whirlpool of rage and expression. Muhammad Ali's rejection of the long-standing white colonial oppression through the denunciation of his slave name in conjunction with his perpetual defiance towards the Vietnam War turned Ali into a unifying force among African Americans. Historians have debated Ali's legacy as an iconic figure in the struggle for black civil rights. Questions have been raised regarding his contradictory stance in relation to racial integration, criticism of black athletes, and his overall influence in relation to the civil rights movement of 1960. Muhammad Ali's rejection of the white colonial oppression and the racist climate of the time provided a source of inspiration and solace to the repressed African Americans. Sports journalist Robert Lipsy laments how for most black athletes at the time there was an established culture of neglecting political expression and to rather just wear the shoes, take the money and run. Sport had provided for African Americans one of the only platforms in which black athletes were able to assert themselves into segregated society. Ali's willingness to combat and publicly expose the inherent racism in society marked an unprecedented melding of politics and sports as described by historian Grant Barrett. Historian Dan Grano furthers this notion, alluding to how Ali's rhetoric and antics invited audiences to make a connection between dramatic boxing ring violence and the threat of inspiring rampant civil disobedience to intervene against institutional and cultural violence at the time. The denunciation of his slave name, Cassius Clay, upon returning from the Olympics of 1960, in conjunction with his joining of the Nation of Islam, challenged the societal standards ruled by white supremacy. Journalist Michael Harriet states that Ali transcended sport and race because he was unapologetically black, while historian Clayton Gordon asserts that Ali's actions signified the renouncement of the perceived limitations on his social and progressive status. Ali's declaration of I don't have to be what you want me to be symbolised his perpetual refusal to be bound by the racist climate of the 1960s. Therefore, Ali's influence on the African Americans was paramount, providing a greater sense of political and self-determination, subsequently propelling the black power movement of the 1960s. The drafting of eligible black Americans to the Vietnam War was a symbol of the racist enterprise which existed in the segregated society throughout the United States. In 1967, 67% of eligible blacks were drafted, whilst only 31% of eligible whites were subsequently drafted. Muhammad Ali's rejection to his drafting in April of 1967 and willingness to sacrifice his glory as heavyweight champion conveyed an extensive criticism of white imperialism and exploitation. Historian Michael Ezra furthers this no notion, suggesting that Ali emerged as a race man in his defiance to enter the US military at a time when blacks were disproportionately drafted and killed in Vietnam. Ali drew attention to the contradictory notion of requiring black Americans to fight and die to defend a country that dehumanised and shunned an entire community because of the colour of their skin. The sacrifices Ali made galvanised many sceptics, energising and educating an interest in African liberation. Historians John Erst and Yevon Bolden assert that it was this defiance that made Ali a hero, who personified the issue of race and class that divided the South and intersected over the Vietnam War. Recent debate in relation to Ali's legacy as a proponent of racial equality who chastised change for African Americans has raised important questions amongst historians. Professor Daniel A. Grano suggests that it is easier today to locate Ali's destructive statements on race, religion and war as important moments in a civil rights past. Grano proclaims Ali in the 1960s and 70s was foreseen as a divisive person whose rhetoric and antics were politically disruptive more so than effective. Muhammad Ali's divisive stance regarding racial integration, his rejection of Christianity and treatment of fellow African American athletes such as Joe Frazier sparked much debate amongst historians. David K. Wiggins proclaims that Ali was not universally endorsed by the black community because he rejected Christianity and talked of racial separation. Ali's embracing of the Nation of Islam, refusal to serve in military and ignoring of athletic codes of behaviour, Jeffrey Salmon argues made Ali a multiple signifier of opposition. Historian Thomas Hayelter has contended that Ali distanced himself from public protests and demonstrations, whilst Professor Johnny Smith suggests Ali showed little interest in the civil rights movement and defined himself as an entertainer, not a race man. Ultimately, Muhammad Ali's influence at a time of racial segregation and inequality was critical to the emergence of the black power movement in the 1960s.
Ali's public rejection and exposure of the white colonial oppression and condemnation of the symbolic racist enterprise to which the drafting of African Americans represented during the Vietnam War provided a platform and a voice for liberation. Whilst historians Thomas Hayeter and David Wiggins, amongst others, have challenged Ali's legacy as a proponent of racial equality, historian David Ziran encapsulates Ali's influence perfectly. Ali was the catalyst that forced both sport and the country as a whole to examine the issues of racism.